All right, now we're once again going to be taking a look at the tropics as well as that Arctic blast that is coming up. We'll take a long range look at the temperature pattern as well. So there's a lot to talk about in today's video, but the current conditions are not one of those things. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on. We have very light showers going on in the northwest, some here for the Rockies and Four Corner states. Uh, up and down the plains, we have a few showers to speak of. Mainly this activity up here in the upper Midwest, I'd say, is the most impactful. And then we have a bit going on here along the southeast and Gulf states. But all of this is relatively minor outside of what's happening up there in Wisconsin. So we'll start out in the northwest. We'll just glance through this. I mean, lighter showers here near Seattle and northward into uh, Canada even, spreading past the Rockies into the plains there of Canada as well. We have areas in between Idaho and Montana or in Wyoming seeing this as well. We see Nevada into Utah seeing some of these lighter showers and then even the southern four corner states as well. Uh, it's when we move up into the plains where things get a little bit more interesting. Looks like a line of heavier showers, even thunderstorms developing there along Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, but still relatively minor. Uh, I do have some flooding concerns as we move further north here. Uh, not necessarily for Minnesota where there is some thunderstorms moving through, but mostly that large pocket that's moving through northern Wisconsin. It depends how long you see rainfall for, but definitely this could lead towards some very, very heavy uh, flooding and precipitation to take place. So we definitely want to watch for all of these things uh, as this can just lead towards many different impacts, obviously, with those heavier thunderstorms that we see. We also see this pocket of tropical thunderstorms here all the way from Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida there. Uh, we could see for the coast of Texas here and the coast of Louisiana, zoomed in a little bit too far there, but as we take a look at this region, we see a lot of these coming on shore. These can create sudden downpours, lots of lightning, uh, and even hail cannot be ruled out with these. Also, uh, water spouts seem to be a common occurrence with these types of thunderstorms offshore. We see further eastward as we take a look at the panhandle of Florida into kind of eastern Louisiana. We see some of these happening here as well. And then as we take a look at Florida, you guys are just surrounded by these thunderstorms, just like yesterday, where there's not a ton in the middle here of Florida, but we see around the outskirts, we're seeing these thunderstorms, and especially here along this western coast of Florida, we're seeing these really, really move on shore at this point. Now, the east coast, not so bad until you move pretty far south, uh, West Palm Beach area, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, these areas are seeing some thunderstorms move on shore at this point. Now, as we move up the southeast coast, we can see that there is some offshore of the southeast, but really these are pretty much uh, non-events. They're not really hitting the United States. They're impacting out the sea, and unless you're out there on a ship right now watching this, this will probably not impact you uh, at all. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to move on towards the upcoming pattern. We're going to take a look at the upcoming storminess, the upcoming temperature pattern, total precipitation, and even those tropical cyclones that we need to track as probabilities are increasing uh, as we approach early September. All right, now here we are taking a look at the upcoming storminess. As we move towards later today, we can see this is going to spread through the southeast, the storminess. We still see the upper Midwest dealing with some of that storminess. Outside of these two different areas, we're not going to see a whole lot, maybe isolated and scattered thunderstorms up and down the east coast, but nothing crazy, crazy to talk about. As we approach tomorrow afternoon, uh, it's still going to be the eastern United States being highlighted here with a lot of this storminess. Outside of there, not a whole lot else going on. Monday afternoon, look at that same exact story. If you're looking west of this circle I just drew, there is not anything really happening here. But the Northeast, Southeast, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, Upper Midwest, and South Central United States are dealing with some storm in this year by Monday, August 29th. All right, now by Tuesday, which is going to be August 30th, already approaching September, we have a strong low with a secondary low here. And this is creating a cold front just like this. And this is what's primarily allowing this cold air to pour in. Uh, and this could feature some pretty intense storms out ahead of that cold front and actually when that cold front pushes through it's going to be a potent one uh, and could bring some nasty nasty impacts it's going to be felt and it's going to be one of those cold fronts where when it passes you're going to feel it the temperature is going to drop significantly right with that front now wednesday august 31st we can see that a lot of this precipitation is happening further south four corner states through the south central united states into the southeast is primarily where we're seeing a lot of this storminess on wednesday 
by the time it reaches Thursday, which will be September 1st. So we are in September by this point. Jetstream is clearly doing something like this. Uh, we do have some storminess underneath right here, but a lot quieter actually as far as precipitation is concerned. Friday, September 2nd here. Again, this area is where we're seeing a ton of the storminess outside of there. Not a whole lot else. Saturday here, afternoon, we see two tropical cyclones, one there in the Gulf of Mexico, one here in the Caribbean. Um, and then we have some precipitation here happening in these areas as well to the north of those uh, tropical cyclones. I'm just going to move it one frame at a time. So we see this one intensifies greatly, but it hits Mexico south of Texas. Um, so that's what ends up happening with that one. As we take a look at Sunday, September 4th, we see this one in the Bahamas rapidly intensifying um, and really dropping in pressure, but it heads north from this point. So it does a turn like this, and it looks to be a fish storm according to this model run. Um, it'll be more than we've had to track in the past, but it really moves um really moves out to sea. That curvature obviously will always kind of make me nervous when I see something like this, even though it still goes out to sea, but you see it kind of wants to turn towards the coast as we watch this play through again. Uh, it kind of does a little turn there, but then eventually goes out to sea. So that turn is obviously a little nerve wracking, but at this point, that's what this model thinks will happen. Obviously, this is more than seven days out, so we're going to take it with a grain of salt, but uh, anything truly is possible. Uh, we will continue to track these tropical systems. It seems like probabilities are pretty good for development. It's more the track and the intensity that we're wondering about. Uh, and time will tell. So again, be sure to stay tuned with us as we'll continue to track uh, this storm system. Now, what's interesting is in the long range, like as we're taking a look at September 10th here, you can see most of that activity is happening in the western two-thirds of the nation here. And then the east is quiet, kind of the opposite of what we had at the beginning of this model run. Very, very interesting stuff here. Let's just take a look here at the end of the model run. And it's the same story. Maybe even a trough in the west uh, at this particular frame uh, where most of that activity is happening in there. East looking very, very quiet by Monday, September 12th. Super, super interesting. Total precipitation through that model run would look something like this. Your whites would be practically no precipitation. Your greens would be or better yet, I skipped the grays. Your grays would be a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens would be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues would be half an inch to an inch. Your yellows would be an inch to two inches. Your reds would be two to five inches. And then your browns would be five to ten inches of precipitation. So we're seeing a lot of that through the central United States, the southeast, and the southwest, actually, believe it or not. Now, for the upcoming temperature pattern, the long-range temperature pattern, here's the next week or so. We see primarily warmth here. Kind of a positive PNA look. We have this cooler air sitting underneath here for the southeast. Classic with that positive PNA look. Uh, as we look at week number two, which would be September 3rd to September 10th here, we see the cooler temperatures mostly through these regions. Now, as we take a look at September 10th through September 17th, it's clear we're seeing a trough here in the east, obviously. And then a bit of a ridge out west, which again is that positive PNA, which is allowing for that jet stream to move around, which is causing this cold air to just pour in to these regions. Let's see. So we need to get to the 17th here, 17th to the 24th. This is when things get a little bit weird. We see cool in the west and cool in the east. Usually this does not happen. This is when I usually say the model is getting confused. But let's see what it looks like by the 24th to the 1st of October. A little bit less confused. I think this model is trending more at cold in the east. That looks more persistent. Uh, as you look out west, there's some yellow dots and some green dots and some blue dots. It looks very confusing. Usually that means that this model is still favoring that cold uh, in the east. And then by October 1st through October 8th, it's really hard to say. I would say anything past mid-September here on this model looks very, very confusing and should definitely be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, but definitely cold air is being um, predicted for the most part through this model run. Uh, and only time we'll be able to tell again with this as well. So be sure to tune in with us daily as we'll continue to track the upcoming temperature pattern, the tropics, everything. We're going to be going over it daily just as we have for the past three or four years or however long it's been since I've made daily uploads. I can't believe it. Uh, now what we're going to do is take a look at this five-day graphical tropical weather outlook and really just break that down. Here we are taking a look at it. We have our first disturbance here which has a 20% chance of development over the next five days, a 0% chance over the next 48 hours. So all that development is going to have to happen at the final three days of that five-day period or afterwards. So we'll watch that closely. Looks like it's heading towards the Yucatan Peninsula. 
definitely interesting there. This one in the middle of the Atlantic has a 10% chance of development over the next 48 hours, and then a 5% chance, or better yet, a 5, oh my goodness, a 30% chance over the next five days uh, of development, which is a little bit higher, obviously. This is the one that the models keep showing developing, and we're going to need to really watch this one closely. So I know I'm getting repetitive, but be sure to tune in with us daily. Be sure to subscribe as we'll track these things daily, uh, and be sure to like the video if you did, and leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.